Hello, I'm Holly and today I'm going to be finding out how many of the highest rated sci-fi books on Goodreads that I have read. So in July Goodreads created a couple of lists, they created a fantasy list and a sci-fi list compiling the highest rated books in both of those genres. Last week I had a look at the fantasy list to see how many I had read and today it is time for sci-fi. I think I haven't read as many sci-fi books as fantasy. Fantasy is my favourite genre but surprisingly I have read quite a few of the sci-fis even though I don't feel like sci-fi is one of my favourite genres. Maybe it is? Also similarly to the fantasy list there was an original list that Goodreads created a couple of years ago which was called the top 50 fantasy and the top 50 sci-fi and obviously those books that are in the top 50 are also in the top 100 they're still the highest rated so I thought I would just quickly mention the ones that I talked about in my first First video. They are 1984 by George Orwell, Binti by Nedia Okorafor, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, Saga Volume 1 by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples, Red Rising by Pierce Brown, Slaughterhouse 5 by Kurt Vonnegut, Station 11 by Emily St. John Mandel, The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, The Martian by Andy Weir and The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. So I've already talked about those books in that other video I would highly recommend you checking that one out and then let's start with the ones that were on that original list that I have now read. The first one of which is Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep or Blade Runner by Philip K. Dick. This is set on a futuristic earth that has been destroyed by a massive world war. Most people have left and gone to other planets and you're following a bounty hunter called Rick Deckard whose job is to retire or kill kill these lifelike androids and he starts to confront the meaning of humanity, what makes someone human. These robots seem to have emotions and just because they're robots does that mean they can't be human? All those kind of discussions. This has a Goodreads rating of 4.08 and I gave it 3.5 stars and I feel like I have some conflicted opinions on this. There were elements that I really loved. I do love this discussion of what it means to be human but I wanted it to go further. It is a very short book and I wanted it just to take more time. Like when Rick Deckard is killing all these replicants it was very quick and I wish that it had been more drawn out, that there had been even more discussion and more depth. There is a scene in the film which is at the end with one of the last replicants that Deckard has to kill and he has this whole monologue and I don't think, is that in this? I can't even remember but I just wanted it to go further and I think if it had it would have got a higher rating but I still really enjoyed this and I think if you're looking into maybe picking up some classic sci-fi this is definitely one that I would recommend. Then we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This has a Goodreads rating of 3.8 81, and I gave it four stars so I really enjoyed this one. This is a very classic sci-fi following this scientist called Frankenstein who tries and succeeds to create this creature from bits of dead bodies. He reanimates this kind of corpse. Again this is a book that looks at humanity, what it means to be human, the nature of evil, isolation, all these themes and again I really love that kind of thing. Frankenstein is incredibly atmospheric and it really is one of the foundations of science fiction as a genre so I definitely recommend this one. Then we have the books that were added onto the top 100 list and the first one of those is Animal Farm by George Orwell. This has a Goodreads rating of 3.94 and I rated it four stars and actually Animal Farm was the first audiobook that I ever listened to. I got it from my local library and and I'm pretty sure it was one that was on a CD. So I don't know how I listened to it. I think I must have had some kind of CD player linked with my laptop, like my old laptop, and I listened to it through that. And like the other books on this list, this again has a lot of commentary on society, the nature of evil. I think it's meant to be a reflection on Stalin, 
Russia, which I didn't know until the end. And then when I looked back, I was like, oh yeah, of course, of course. I wasn't a huge fan of the ending. And I do tend to find this with George Orwell's books. The only other book that I read by him is 1984. And I remember that when I finished that the first time, I was absolutely infuriated by the ending. That is now one of my favorite books of all time. Like I understand the ending, but at the time it just feels really anticlimactic and it kind of ruined the book for me. So for those who don't know, this is set on this farm where there are these, is it anthropomorphic animals? Like animals that can speak and kind of have human-like traits. And I'm pretty sure that they get rid of all the humans, like they chase the humans off the farm and then they decide to run the farm themselves. But some of them start getting a bit big for their boots, start getting a little power hungry, and it's following the animals trying to cope with this. Like they've got rid of the evil ruler to basically impose a new evil ruler. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I don't have much to say. I think a lot of people read this for like GCSE or school and I didn't. I read this in my own time but I do think it is a good book to kind of analyse and really appreciate all the concepts that it's talking about. So yeah, another one that I really really enjoyed. The next book is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. This has a Goodreads rating of 3.99 and I rated it 3.5 stars. This is set in a dystopian future where books are illegal and our main character is a fireman whose job is to destroy all the books that they find. So it's very much looking at the importance of language and being able to write down your ideas to pass on to other people. I'm pretty sure there's also discussions in this about technology. I think this is the one where there are like TV screens that are playing all the time and people are like addicted to media and stuff like that. And I did read this quite a few years ago so my memories of this aren't the best. But something that I do remember really enjoying about this is Ray Bradbury's prose. I think he has a very poetic way of writing and I'm sure that I've read another book by him that also has that beautiful writing, which I find like sometimes science fiction can be a bit dry, a bit clinical, but this one is definitely more, I don't know, just more poetic. And I think if you do like kind of flowery prose and you're trying to get into science fiction, I think Ray Bradbury is probably a good place to start. Again, this is a very short book, so it's not very intimidating. And yeah, I only gave it 3.5, so clearly I didn't love it. In my notes that I made at the time that I read this, I said that I wanted it to be more fleshed out. And that seems to be a theme with quite a few books on this list. I did really enjoy what it was talking about and the story, but it just seemed to end too quickly. I wanted more. But again, if you're looking to maybe read some dystopian, to read some more classic sci-fi, this is one that I would recommend. And then for one of my most hated books, we have The Road by Cormac McCarthy. This has a Goodreads rating of 3.97 and I rated it one star. I read this book quite a while ago, I think it was 2017, and I just hated it. I mentioned last time that I read a book with post-apocalyptic themes and that is really something that I don't like and this is a post-apocalyptic novel. It follows a man in this world that has been destroyed by natural disasters so like forest fires and basically environmental disaster and I'm pretty sure it's him and his child, I don't know if is it his son, and they're just trying to survive. There's cannibals who are trying to kill people. The world is pretty awful, it's burning, it's it's not a fun place to be. And first of all, I don't like apocalyptic novels, so I wasn't gonna love this anyway. I don't know why I read this. I really have no clue why I would have picked this book up, but I did. And then also I just found this incredibly boring. I vaguely remember that the way that this book was written just really didn't click with me. I don't know if it had any chapters, maybe it didn't have any chapters and it was just long and confusing and boring and Maybe that was the point, that it's meant to be this kind of slog of a book because that's reflective of what is actually going on in the book, but I don't want to read something boring, so I didn't enjoy this book. I wouldn't recommend it. I know that a lot of people really enjoy this book. I'm sure maybe it's on those lists of like top books that you need to read in your life and that's why I picked it up. I really have no idea why I read it, 
but I read it and I didn't enjoy it and I wouldn't recommend this one. And then the final book that I have read so far from that list is A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. This is some kind of special edition. I think I got it from a charity shop or something which is why it doesn't have like a dust jacket. I don't know if it's meant to have a dust jacket. And this has a Goodreads rating of 3.99. I rated it four stars. So again it's a book that I, I don't know if I'd say I enjoyed it because this contains a lot of dark topics you're following this boy who is absolutely despicable. He's violent, he rapes women, he is just truly a monster and he ends up getting arrested and put into this study that is trying to see if you can train someone to not have these urges. So he's pretty much subjected to torture where he is forced to watch these disgusting videos of violent acts and he's also given drugs that make him feel sick to try and create this connection in his mind. I don't have that much to say. This book is written in a very unique way. There's a whole like new dialect in this and it has a whole like glossary at the back which did make it a little bit difficult to read and I actually watched the film first which I would definitely recommend because you're hearing the words spoken in context if that makes sense and I actually would really like to reread this book at some point because I really did love the film and I definitely recommend recommend the film. If you're not interested in reading the book, something that sounds a bit confusing, watch the film because I love the film. It is very dark though, trigger warnings for violence and rape and torture and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't have that much to say. I did enjoy this. Again, it's very short. I don't know if I'd recommend it to everyone though. I don't think this is going to be everyone's cup of tea. But if it does sound a little bit interesting to you, I would recommend it. And that is the last book that I have read. So, so far I have read 17 books off the top 100 list. I have quite a few to go and this is going to be a series on my channel where every now and again I kind of look back at the list and see how many more I've read. So I'd love to know if you're interested in that. How many of these books have you read? I'll leave a link to the blog post so you can have a look. But I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and to everyone out there, stay curious. Bye!